So the first type of uh, inheritance or link I will be discussing is the links on the level of the soul. Um, for most people these are not conscious and they are not experienced also as uh, differences. But the uh, condition of the soul does influence all other conditions. So I do think it's good to spend some time on uh, reviewing this. Um, I explained earlier that there's roughly four types of, uh, of soul. Um, there are the souls who are interested only in the higher powers. Uh, so they focus their attention upwards towards beings which are higher than them. Um, there are those who um, focus on uh, everybody around them. So rather than focusing up, it is more of a uh, focus on everybody else rather than themselves. Um, then there are those who do focus on themselves, who focus their attention inward. And there are those who focus their attention downward or more interested in working with lower powers than with higher powers. So if we look at these four soul types, um, they also have a very strong influence on how we interact on a social level with our family and with our uh, significant others. One of the most problematic types here is actually the person's who have an interest in the divine, in the higher powers. Um, by nature, they tend to be rather ascetic and impractical, you could say. So, because their main focus is these you know, gods, goddesses, angels, um, saints, uh, enlightened masters, they tend to um, severely neglect, actually, um, everybody around them. And um, they tend to have a tendency also towards asceticism. So they're not interested in having a career or um, maintaining their house or their clothes or their car or anything else because it doesn't really interest them at all. Um, so often their uh, people around them tend to be very unsatisfied with them. Um, they feel that they're not receiving enough attention from them. Um, they don't feel that they actually matter to the other person because the other person always sees them as in a, way, a little bit second rate, not that interesting. And he also, yeah, he or she also treats themselves in that way. They don't have that respect for their own incarnation or their own bodies except as a reflection of the higher world or a reflection of the divine. But nothing for them has an intrinsic value. So the, you could say the purpose of a, of a person like this is a little bit, you could say, yeah, selfish because they are not focused on their friends or their family. They are just focused on what their purpose should be towards the divine. And only indirectly, like through the divine, they have a relationship with everything else. So a person serving the divine may find that yeah, they have to take care of the sick or the, the poor or um, the lonely people um, and they may have um, yeah, a function to fulfill in the name of the divine but they do it basically because the divine wants them to do it not because the person is poor or sick or suffering or lonely and the people receiving such help, although they can be very grateful for the help they're receiving, they will also notice that it's not really possible to create a real connection with such a person. So your heart may go out to such a person, you may admire them, you may love them, you may think they're wonderful, really a source of light, um, but you can never capture them, you can never really hold them, you can never manipulate them. And this relative powerlessness of the people around them can often lead to fear, can lead to frustration also. Then we come to the second type. Um, the second type of, um, of soul, the souls who are interested in everybody else. Um, they're already a lot nicer on a, on a social level. 
uh, they tend to take a real interest in others. Um, they tend sometimes to be a little bit overbearing. Uh, because they often feel a need to help the other person, to advise the other person, to be with the other person, to connect to the other person. And this not, might not always be very welcome or requested even. But if they see a need, you could say see a need, fill a need. This is very much their, um, their modus of operation. So also to motivate themselves for them to do anything to develop themselves, they need other people to have a need for them. So they tend always to be focused on problems, on the negative, um, always looking for challenges or challenging situations or challenging people even. Um, you can often see this in relationship, like why does a person uh, again and again choose to have a partner who might be out of work or a drug addict or a person has violence problems um, and it can be that it is because they have such a type of soul that they are attracted to people who have big needs and then they can also develop themselves by fulfilling these needs by helping this other person grow and develop themselves so they are you could say natural helpers uh, teachers um, the biggest problem these people have in their lives is also that they don't focus on themselves. They tend to be easier in their social interactions than the people who are focused only on the divine. So the people with this second type of uh, soul, who are very interested in others, have the tendency to uh, neglect themselves. So on a social level, these people, while they're more you could say involved than the people who have a very divinely oriented soul. Um, they are still not very focused on their careers or on furthering their own goals. Um, so they tend to be, yeah, you could say, um, very motivated by their colleagues, by the people they work with, but not so much have very clear career goals for themselves or development goals of themselves. And that's in a very strong contrast with this third group. The third group are people who are mainly involved with themselves. And um, this is actually the majority of people in uh, Western civilization. And more and more as, of course, the influence of the US and Europe is uh, yeah, spreading to the rest of the world. It becomes a more and more common thing for people with that um, yeah, type of soul to incarnate upon our planet. And these people who have an interest in themselves, first and foremost, um, they're usually smart about it. They know that if they want to get a better job, to get a career, to have a nice, enjoyable relationship, that there has to be a give and take. But for them it is um, not such an open giving thing as it is for the second uh, group. So this third group is not so much like looking at other person's needs as what can I do, how can I help them, but as opportunities like okay well this person needs healing, um, they have a big need so that means I can make money out of that. Or gosh they're very lonely, well um, so they want to be around me, well, that's okay, I can give them my company and then they can help me maybe clean my yard or bake a cake or whatever. <laughs> so they are always aware of their own purpose, their own goal in whatever they do. And they tend to look for win-win situations where they can do what they like and also have the benefit of uh, having social contact um, having money, having career, uh, learning something. So for them the, uh, it's very much about what has the biggest value to them. Um, often these people will move uh, from one relationship into another or from one job into another depending on the benefits. So if another job offers more money more career opportunities, well they tend to move, leave one job, take the other job. Same also with personal development. 
if they feel that yeah, they're in a way stuck, they're bored, they're not growing anymore in their job, they will become dissatisfied and if they cannot get enough stimulation for their own development from their environment, well then they will quit their job and take another job to in a way, keep on challenging themselves, to keep on growing. So it's important also to note that these are really soul types. They're not types of behavior you can simply learn or unlearn. It is your deepest, most motivation. It is how you experience the world. So for this yeah, um, third type of soul, the Luciferian soul, it is all about um, this light, the power, knowledge, skills, uh, which they feel within themselves and which call them to um, yeah, develop themselves. So they feel a very strong inner urge for development rather than um, obeying to the divine or obeying the people around them. They obey their inner feelings, their inner urge, their own will, it's, uh, which in a way what is what defines them, which also defines their interactions. So many people find on a social level that these people are a little bit mercenary. Like they will stay in a relationship as long as it suits them, as long as it benefits them. But as soon as the benefit is gone, they have no problem not calling, not seeing that person anymore and just moving on. And forgetting about who they used to be with in the past. And yeah, this can of course be very hurtful if you yeah, form an emotional attachment to a person of this type. Last but not least are the people who have a strong interest in uh, powers which are smaller than them. So they like to be in a kind of a dominant position, in a su position of superiority and uh, then give guidance or control to things which are smaller than them. Uh, naturally these people are very interested in uh, attaining so a high as possible position. So these people tend to gravitate also to um, positions of power. So they tend to go into governmental institutions or into hierarchical organizations. Um, so they can have yeah, more people under them, a bigger team, a bigger budget, a bigger office um, and things like this. But their motivation is very different from the luciferical type who is interested in self-development. Um, people of this type they are more interested in, in a way, enlarging their power base, enlarging their kingdom, if you will. So rather than, um, in a way, finding a job or a position which helps them to grow or to develop and which is stimulating to them, they tend to gravitate towards whatever situation has most power, most prestige, most opportunities for, uh, for advancement. So they are very aware of uh, social standards, the status, status symbols, uh, proper behavior. Um, you could say they are very um, oriented, they have a kind of a class mindset. And they want to be in a way, moving themselves from a lower class or caste to a higher one. And the way they do this is usually by trying to get results with the people which are below them. So if they manage to, um, to get the people below them to, to grow, to develop or to produce or to meet their targets, this will, will reflect well on them and they can move forward. And some of these people are very beneficial for everybody else because they will just help those other people to develop themselves, to try to fit their job descriptions as well as possible with their skills. But there are also many who basically just want the power but don't feel a responsibility that goes with it. And they will basically, yeah, just to meet their targets, um, really stress out their, uh, uh, the people they're leading and give them a burnout within two to four to six years and then just replace them and they can be very ruthless in the pursuit of their own goals and of their own careers or meeting the goals or the uh, yeah, targets set
by the people higher than them. So it is often like, um, you could say, um, a pyramid system where the person in the top sets certain goals, then the persons below them, yeah, in a way, make these higher goals their own and implement them on their own level and so forth. And um, this top-down thinking has a problem because you're not looking at the people who you're working with. What are their goals? What is what they want to accomplish? So it's very much like mission first, company first, targets comes first and then the people, the humanity comes at a very distant uh, second place. Often in their social lives they tend to be uh, a little bit can they can be a little bit overbearing they can also have very uh, narcissistic tendencies and they will often try to dominate to dictate to other people um, in contact they tend to interrupt everybody who they see as lower than them and they tend to yeah in a way be quiet or suck up and listen to people who they regard as having a higher status um, so they're not very egalitarian in their views. Um, so this is a relatively small part of humanity, but also a very influential part of humanity because many people who manage to get to these powerful positions, they are of this type because this is their focus, this is what they spend their energy on, this is what they um, do everything for to, um, to achieve. And they tend to treat, in a way, their, the people in their social environment. Um, this can be their parents, their family, um, also their, their co-workers, um, in the same way, almost as like building blocks uh, to play around with, to build what they wish to build. So, in a way, everybody else to them is just raw material. So they do have an interest in the other person, but they don't have an interest in the other person as a person, but interest in the other person as a raw material or as a tool to achieve what uh, they want to achieve. So I hope that by understanding a little bit what soul type you have and what other soul types other people may have around you, how this will impact their um, yeah, environment and the social interactions they have with their environment. And if you know more or less what a person is like and you can understand their vision, their reality, it often helps to be more understanding, be more forgiving and to communicate in a much better and much more constructive way if you speak each other's language. In the next video I will talk a little bit about the egregores. These are, in a way, cooperative groups working towards a similar ideal. So a lower level than the soul type, but still quite high and usually people are also still quite unaware of it.